Hi, this is James Cook, Assistant Professor of Social Science at the University of Maine at Augusta, and I'm speaking to you today from not Maine, not Augusta, but Woodstock, Vermont, where I'm presenting at the uh, New England Political Science Association some research that I've engaged in uh, using social network analysis to understand legislative politics, how it is that people in the Maine State Legislature communicate to one another, how they communicate to people outside the legislature, and how people outside the legislature then communicate to them. Now that's an academic vision of social network analysis. Uh, and I can tell you that an academic career in social network analysis is a lot of fun. Uh, this is one path that you can take if you're really interested in social network analysis. My job is to ask questions about how people connect, how people uh, communicate with one another, what those patterns are, and what the implications are for real life, meaningful outcomes that we care about. For instance, if we care about state politics, if we care about the laws that are passed that influence the way that we have to live our lives, we might want to care about how the people who make those laws uh, get together, interact, uh, and make decisions. But that's not the only path that you could take with social network analysis in a career. Uh, I'd like to just go through a few non-academic uh, paths for social network analysis as you finish this course and ask yourself, well, what can social network analytic techniques do for me? Uh, how can I use them going forward? Well, if you're interested in a national security career, one of the things you can do is that you can uh, engage in warrantless surveillance. We've taken a look at that in this class. Um, they need a lot of technicians to carry out that activity. And they need a lot of analysts, people who understand social networks, who know how to use the tools of social network analysis. To do what? To find associates, to uh, follow network distance out in uh, a snowball sample, finding the ripple effects of certain events, finding associates, finding in military intelligence, where social network analysis is also large, finding cut points to disrupt networks. Uh, this is a big area of social network analysis. In criminal justice, that is law enforcement, uh, there's an interest in using social network analysis to find the areas of greatest risk for criminal victimization, knowing that uh, most crimes happen in the context of an ongoing relationship, a tie. Uh, there's a concern with the identification of organized crime players. How can that be done through uh, an examination, a quantitative examination of known associates uh, and looking for structural holes where there seems to be a missing individual. De-anonymization of uh, 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 online communications uh, and of pseudonymous offline communications. Why to combat fraud, to uh, uncover networks for drug and human trafficking, uh, to uncover money laundering schemes. These are law enforcement efforts uh, associated with criminal justice that use social network analysis. If you are interested in health, people being um, more healthy, people living longer lives, people getting the chance to live their lives uh, from right from the beginning, there's a lot that social network analysis has to offer. One area is in epidemiology. Uh, a great book by Randy Schiltz and the band played on. Uh, it is a classic story of uh, the early AIDS epidemic when epidemiologists were trying to figure out what this thing was that was killing people. And they found patient zero. How did they do it? They found it using social network analysis. Uh, what about uncovering the mechanism by which a disease spreads? That is a social tie. Uh, knowing social network analysis can help you understand that. What about finding points for intervention? Uh, in, in someone's health. Uh, health and wellness networks uh, have been set up in which people encourage other people through their currently existing social network ties to uh, engage in better sexual health, to uh, spread information about child rearing practices, to support one another in breastfeeding, to um, help each other with learning about how to eat better. Uh, the five a day for better health uh, uh, um, campaign that you may have heard about was 
uh, developed in a way that people could spread that message, not just through posters, but also through social network ties. What about uh, networks of needle exchange? Uh, what about networks of drug abuse? If we know where to intervene, if we know who the most important people are to uh, intercept and to change the behavior of, we can end up with a better outcome. Vaccination. Here's another area in which knowing the people who are unvaccinated in the midst of other people who are unvaccinated tells us exactly who to intervene with and who to make sure we get the vaccine to first in situations of scarcity. If you're in business, if you want to understand markets, uh, understanding markets now is all about trade. Sometimes that's uh, within a nation. Sometimes that's international trade. Understanding the flows uh, of trade. That involves social network analysis. Uh, it, you, there's a whole new uh, business of social media use and social media analytics. And that is all about creating ties and understanding ties so that people can share information, people can do business, uh, people can set up their own businesses of online social networks. These are our big businesses lately. And you can jump in with that field knowing now that you have some social network analytic tools at your disposal. In management consulting, um, there are, are questions for management consultants that they are classic ones. Who are the best leaders? Who are the inspirers? Who are the connectors? Who are the bridges? Where are the redundancies? Well, the one standard way to uh, work with that model is to interview people and ask them uh, who seems to be most effective. Uh, a new social network analytic model in management consulting is looking for relationships and patterns of relationships and looking for places where uh, there need to be better connections and places where there are connections that are reproduced at many different levels and perhaps a few could be taken out. That's a social network question. In activism, let's say you're not interested in business. Let's say you're interested in changing the world for the better. Maybe you are... Uh, someone who wants to get involved in environmental activism. Maybe you're someone who wants to get involved in um, some kind of uh, political lobbying. Uh, maybe you want to start a, a mass movement which involves marches and pickets and things like that. Well, if you do, you need to get some members. You need to get some followers. And one of the classic uh, truths of social movement research is that the people who are isolated the people who are separated from one another and are suffering are actually the least likely to join a movement. Who are the people most likely to join a movement? Those who are connected to others. So using social network analysis to recruit uh, is possibly quite valuable. Once you have someone in a social uh, movement, you need to keep them there. How can you do that? By maintaining ties, looking for people who are isolated uh, versus embedded in social networks uh, in a highly dense group of people uh, can tell you who's most likely to leave the social movement and you can intervene to try to keep people on board. That same set of questions can be applied to education. So if you're interested in a career in education, especially higher education uh, in these institutions where people don't have to go like elementary schools and middle schools, and high schools, but institutions where people choose to go and can leave, like colleges and universities, there's this huge push for retention. Certainly for recruitment, we want to bring people in, but once people are there, we want to keep them there. And what is one of the most uh, uh, strong predictors of someone leaving? Uh, a connection to someone else. If you don't have that connection, you're more likely to leave. Uh, there are life coaches who use social network analysis. So there's a program called NetMap, Net-Map, in which people and groups are brought together. There's a facilitator, and they're asked to identify what are your challenges, what are your goals, and wh who are the people, who are the groups that can help you get to those goals, what are they trying to do, how do they relate to one another. These life coaches then will place that gigantic network map up on a wall, and people will come to new realizations about where they are in life and where they need to be. Uh, 
uh, that you can find an example of this at netmap.wordpress.com. Uh, in politics, uh, issues of recruiting people, getting out the vote, uh, knowing what messages you need to use to get out the vote, these are all related to the relationships that people have. If we want to build coalitions within institutional politics, some of the dynamics are the same as uh, the dynamics we have for uh, building a social movement outside of politics. Uh, people get pulled in through the people they know, and so social network analysis is highly relevant. This is just a start. There are so many, many different ways in which the skills you've learned in social network analysis can be applied uh, in your future career. Uh, this is a selling point for you, but you need to be able to uh, articulate that strength that you have in order to uh, activate that strength in your future hire. I hope that this video has, has helped you to, to realize some of those connections. Uh, and please, if you have any more questions about the use of social network analysis in particular careers, uh, I encourage you to get in touch with me, and I look forward to a discussion we might have then.